All right, I just want to make one thing clear from the very beginning. Overrated and bad are two different words. Okay, they have two different definitions. They're not synonyms. They don't mean the same thing. Not even close. Overrated means overrated, and bad means bad. That out of the way, the name of the wind is extremely overrated. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So I've been hearing about this book for several years now. And, I mean, honestly, I don't get what the hype is all about. Like, usually with books that I'm not super into, I can at least see the appeal of it. Like, like the Powder Mage trilogy. I didn't particularly like the first book in that, but I get why other people like it. This one, I'm just... I'm kind of at a loss. So with this review, I'm gonna do a non-spoiler section and then a spoiler section. Partially because people have been asking me to do that for a little while, and partially because I feel that this book kind of needs it in order to properly talk about it. So, I'll start with the non-spoiler section. Now, this book is about this guy named Kavoth, and at the beginning of the book, he is hiding out. He, he's just an innkeeper in a small town, and apparently he was some sort of legendary hero before this, but something happened, we don't know what, even by the end of the book, and so he just decided to fake his death and move away. And... Then this guy called the Chronicler comes along, and he runs into Kavoth, and he's like, Hey, you're Kavoth. He recognizes him, and he wants his story. He wants to get his story, and eventually Kavoth agrees to it, and so the majority of the rest of the book is just Kavoth telling the story of his life to the Chronicler, and telling the story of how he became such a legendary hero. And Kavoth's childhood, the main story, starts off with he is just a kid in a traveling theater troupe, uh, and apparently he's some sort of, like, genius, and he actually learns the basics of magic, and, you know, yada yada yada. Uh, it's actually kind of tedious for a little while. Uh, but then, these weird demon things come along and kill his entire troop, but he manages to escape. And the, the demons are called Chandrian. Uh, and so, most of the rest of his childhood arc is about him just trying to find information on the Chandrian so that he can find them and kill them for revenge. So the plot of this book is simultaneously the best part and the worst part, because it oscillates between being really, really interesting and also the framing of it is really great. Uh, the only issue I have with the framing is that it kind of robs certain scenes of tension because, you know, we, we know Kavoth is going to survive, so these parts where it's like, oh, is he going to die? We, we already know it's not going to happen. Uh, but beyond that, I think that actually seeing this sort of story through the eyes of the main hero is really neat, and it's not something we see uh, in the fantasy genre very often, at least not something I've seen. Uh, but also at the same time, the plot just jumps between being really kind of interesting and kind of cool, like every time Kavoth is searching for information on the Chandrian, it's really neat, but there's also just so much shit that we don't need. It's so tedious, there's a lot of nothing going on. And I'll get a little bit more in-depth on that in the spoiler section, but, I mean, there's just so many parts of this book where I'm thinking, I don't care, okay? When Kavoth is at university, th there's so much that just doesn't matter there, okay? He's not really forming particularly interesting relationships with his friends. Uh, he, he has a very brief romance, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but that's... I mean, that's okay, but that's not very interesting. He has a rivalry with another student and one of the professors... But a lot of it is just, there's nothing happening. Hell, it takes 130 pages to get to the point where the Chandrian kill his theater troupe. I mean, there, there's so much nothing in this book, and it's a long-ass book. So having all of that in there is a huge, huge detriment. Another thing in this book that is simultaneously pretty good and also really, really terrible is Kavoth himself. Because Kavoth is, well, okay, at the beginning... It really seems like Kavoth is just a huge, gigantic, insufferable Mary Sue. I mean, they spend several conversations talking about what a genius he is, how smart he is, uh, and even as he gets older, he always knows what to do. He almost never screws up anything. He just... Ugh, it, it is really, really insufferable. Um, but at the same time, he does have actual personality, and he does have some actual flaws, so it's not the end of the... It's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, and you also remember 
that it's possible that Kaboth is an unreliable narrator in this story. It's possible he's talking himself up. He's trying to make himself look better. And I will get more into that in the spoiler section as well, but suffice to say, later on in the book, his character didn't bother me nearly as much as it did at the beginning. Because at the beginning, it really, really is insufferable to just not only hear him talk himself up and talk about how, yeah, I did this thing and it was really cool, and I did this other thing and it was really cool, and I learned magic in like two days, but also to hear other characters talk about him as though he's just the most impressive genius ever. It's just, God, dude, stop, please. And then there's his romantic relationship with this girl named Denna, and that one, uh, it also starts off kind of cringy and stupid, but as time goes on, they do have, they do develop actual chemistry, and you can tell that, okay, yeah, these two are friends, and you can see why they might like each other, uh, but the thing is, it's not exactly a healthy relationship, at least not in this book, it certainly doesn't seem that way, it seems more like he's just kind of obsessive over her, and she's very d dismissive of him, but it could have been a hell of a lot worse, so that wound up not bothering me too much, and again, you gotta remember, this is Kavoth telling the story years later, so he's going to talk about Denna as though she is the most beautiful, most amazing woman ever. And since I'm me, I can't have this sort of review without talking about the world building a little bit. I think it is generally pretty solid. I mean, it's not, like, super expansive or super deep in any particular area, but it does have two separate magic systems, one of which is actually really hard magic, which is very well explained and very neat and, and uh, very unique, and I really liked it. Uh, the second one is more of a soft system, and that's the one about finding out the names of objects, like the true names of them, and then when you know that, you can control them. And, like, the name of the wind is supposedly a really big deal in this world's uh, mythology and in their magic system, because once you know the name of the wind, you can use it to fly and shit. So that is where, you know, that's where the title comes from. And so both of those are really, really cool. And the book also goes into a whole lot of detail about the coin system, believe it or not. That's... And that's, I, I liked that just because it's not something that often gets a lot of detail in these sorts of books. It's just like, here, here's gold, like gold coins, that's it. But in this one, you have like a very detailed, very complex hierarchy of like what different coins are worth and how they uh, merge into one another, things like that. It's, I, I liked it. It was really cool. And of course, I can't talk about this book without mentioning that the prose is just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it. this... That's not something I care about very often, except when it's either particularly good or particularly bad. And in this case, it is really, really amazing, because almost every line in here, it really draws you into the scene. It really gives you an idea of what things look like. It gives you an idea of what people are feeling, of what's going on. It's, I mean, it's almost perfect. You really just have to read it to see what I mean for yourself. But I heard that this was Patrick Rothfuss's first book, and... He really just wrote it and rewrote it a whole bunch of different times, so it does feel like he has polished it to a sheen, at least in that regard, because I've already mentioned my issues with the plot and everything, but th the actual way it's written does feel polished and perfected in just the best way possible. So in that regard, this book is just absolutely amazing. So I guess if someone is just reading it for that reason, then sure, I, I guess I could see why they love it so much. So I think that's about it for the spoiler section. Would I recommend this book? I... Man, that... I really don't know. I sat here for like two minutes trying to think, like, w would I recommend this book and who would I recommend it to? Um, I guess if you're someone that just really likes, like, poetic, great prose, then I guess this will be for you. Um, if you're someone that doesn't care about that, then, well, that probably won't make a difference, obviously. And I guess if you want to hear sort of a heroic fantasy story that's told from the perspective of that hero, and like, if that appeals to you, then you'll probably, probably enjoy this a lot. But if you're not someone that's into that, then I don't know if there's much here for you, because, again, the plot, it, it goes on for a very long time, and there's not much tension in it, and there's not a whole lot of stuff to actually care about, and... I mean, the main character is actually okay, but he doesn't have that much development. He doesn't have any real neat relationships. There aren't really any other characters that play huge roles that are particularly interesting. I mean, there's not a whole lot here for you. So 
I don't know if I can really recommend this to fans of fantasy or just fans of epic fantasy or regular heroic fantasy uh, unless you're looking for something very specific. Now on to the spoiler section, so if you haven't read the book, you should uh, probably leave now. Okay, so first and foremost, Kavoth is definitely, definitely, definitely an unreliable narrator. Okay, that was one of the only things I heard about this book uh, before I started reading it, was people arguing about, oh, is he an unreliable narrator or not? And, guys, the book just straight up tells you. Okay, at one point, when he's in Tarbine, he goes to a storyteller and he asks the storyteller, hey, was that story all true? Was it, was it a lie? And the storyteller just, just straight up tells him, well, sometimes you need to lie a little bit in order to make a good story. And so... I'm just thinking, wow, all of those forum fights, all, all of those people arguing with each other, the book just fucking said it, guys. It's not exactly subtle, okay? That was just Patrick Rothfuss talking directly to the audience. And so once I accepted that, that really did make Kavoth's character a lot less insufferable, because, you know, okay, he's talking himself up, and so I can imagine a little bit, okay, so this probably didn't go quite as well for him, people probably weren't quite as enthralled with him and his intelligence, he, he was just... You know, he was probably a smart guy, don't get me wrong, but there's no way he was the unparalleled genius that he portrays himself as. And now I want to get into specific parts of the plot and why exactly they are so pointless. So, after his theater troupe is killed and he runs off and he lives as a street urchin in Tarbine for like three fucking years, I, I mean, what was even the point of that sequence? Because that goes on for quite a while, okay? That's a substantial chunk of the book that is taken up there, and I get that it was a substantial chunk of his life and it's important to him, but basically nothing happens that entire time that actually matters to the plot. Okay, it just uh, near the end of that sequence, he realizes, oh, hey, Chandrian. Well, I should probably go after them. I think I'm going to go the, to the university so that I can do research on them. And, like, what, what is the point of any of that? Like, he doesn't really learn anything particularly important on the streets. Uh, as far as I remember, he doesn't use any of the skills he learned there uh, in order to help him out later in the story. Like, all the skills he uses, like riding a horse and everything, th those were all learned back when he was a kid in the theater troupe. So I, I really, for the life of me, cannot figure out why that decided to go on for so long. And I know Kavoth at certain points mentions that, like, oh, I'm giving context to this. Well, we don't need that much context. We really, really don't. And then there's the university, and the university, 90% of the stuff that happens there is just Kavoth trying to show off how smart he is, or how talented he is. And, I mean, I get that some of it is also explaining how magic works and everything, but good god, it goes on longer than his life as a street rat in Tarbine, and almost nothing important or interesting happens at all. Like, think about it. There's... Just him showing off to his professors, him impressing some of his students, there's him getting kicked out of the archives, and he spends pretty much the entire rest of the book wanting to go back in so that he can research the Chandrian. Like, you could probably describe that in, like, a paragraph. Okay, you really could. It was, hey, I got kicked out of the archives for doing this, and then eventually I was able to find a way to sneak in, and ta-da, then I found what I needed. Like, we really did not need several hundred pages of shit in between that those two events. We really did not. And I guess that some people like the university because to them it might feel like a more adult version of Harry Potter or something, but the thing about Harry Potter is that the university was the focus of the story in that one, okay? Hogwarts was this magical land far away from our muggle world where the main characters went to like have adventures and make friends and shit, the university seems kind of boring, and in a lot of ways it seems miserable, at least to Kavoth, because, you know, there's constant politics and battles between various factions at the school, and not like actual physical battles, just people being dicks to each other mostly. And so, it doesn't feel like an adult Harry Potter, it feels like an actual university filled with a bunch of obnoxious assholes. And so, all the stuff with the university is just... Eh, just why? Why is that even there? And then there's some of Kavoth's relationships with women other than Denna, like uh, the moneylender, who is very clearly flirting with him and he doesn't quite figure it out, or uh, the other student, Fella, who's very clearly flirting with him and he doesn't realize it until later. Like, a lot of that just feels like Kavoth, the older one, again, trying to show off, only in this case it's a little more cringy. Uh, or it's just him trying to show that, like, okay, you know, all these bitches were 
crawling all over me, but you know, I love Denna so much that I wasn't going to do that. And again, I guess if that's what they're going for, that could work, but eh, it just it was pretty cringy for a lot of the points that, or a lot of it was cringy, okay? I'm just leaving it at that. And then there's the climax of the book. So what happens there is that Kavoth hears about the Chandrian attacking another town and killing a whole bunch of people there. And so he immediately runs off like, he goes really, really far away from the university for several days uh, in order to investigate. And while he's there, all he really finds out is that the Chandrian are killing people in order to prevent information about themselves from be sp from spreading. Okay, he doesn't actually see them again while he's there. He just finds that little bit of information out. So he knows why they killed his parents, sort of. And, I mean, again, that's really the only bit of information we get throughout this entire book about the Chandrian. Like, we... We don't know anything else about them, and Kavoth gets no closer to finding out where they are or how to defeat them. And so I just felt like this book was kind of a waste of my time in that regard. But even setting that aside, while Kavoth is there, uh, he finds this creature called a Drakus, which is basically just a dragon. You know, it's this big lizard thing which breathes fire, eats trees, you know, that, that sort of thing. And the Drakus is going nuts. It's uh, about to kill a bunch of people, so Kavoth has to figure out how to kill it. And, I mean, I guess when viewed in a vacuum, this sequence is actually pretty good. It shows off that Kavoth is, you know, genuinely intelligent. Uh, he does know how to work with people, and he's a decent person, you know? He, he goes out of his way to try and stop this thing, and so, okay, yeah, that does make Kavoth look better, but really, it's, what, what purpose does it play in the overall story? Like, does it make Kavoth more famous? Is that the beginning of him as a hero? I, I guess so, but I, again, we could have gotten it in so much less time than we wound up getting it. And so, if you take nothing else from this review, just take that this book is padded, okay? It's, my copy is over 700 pages long, and most of them were unnecessary. Most of them were kind of boring, most of them were tedious, and so at the end of the day, I just, I didn't like The Name of the Winds that much. I, I don't think it's terrible, I think it's decent, but that's really all I can say about it. So if you are someone that really likes this book, could you please explain to me why you like it? Could you explain to me what you see in it, what's great about it? Um, and also if you have spoilers, please mark them in the comments, but for real, I am I am curious to see what you guys think about this. But now that's all I have to say. So uh, if you could please uh, rate this video, comment, subscribe, sub uh, go to my Patreon page, give me gi just give me money, please. And uh, well, I, I think that's all the stuff that we're supposed to say at the end of our videos. So you know, just just do all that, and we'll be square. <laughs>